Hey, what's going on guys? This video, we're going to go through some examples of constructors. Specifically, I'm gonna be teaching you how to create the default constructor. Monday.com is your visual project management solution. This is the tool that allows you to see where every task or project stands with a single glance. With a fully customizable interface, you can create the exact workflow that you need for you and your team to get stuff done. Monday.com is available on mobile and integrates well with some of the most popular tools out there. So get your life in order by giving it a try for free. Link in the description. First thing you should understand is that when you say new and then your custom type, in this case student, and have these parentheses with nothing in them, this is invoking the default constructor. And the only thing it does is brings the object into memory so it exists. It's also going to assign some default values to the properties of this object. You can look up those defaults, it depends on the type. Essentially, all it's going to do is it's going to initialize the object as little as humanly possible or computerly possible, just so we can basically have this object. So let's go into the student class and look at what it would look like if we created this ourselves. We would say public, we would skip the return type, and we would say student. So that's what it's going to look like. And for the body, it's literally gonna do nothing. And you can see hovering over this, it says empty constructor is redundant. The reason it's redundant is because it's automatically going to be created for us. But you might wanna keep that in there. And you can also do some custom code in the default constructor. So for example, we could say console right line. And at this point, it's no longer redundant because we've modified the default constructor. We can just say creating object, giving this a run. You can see that constructor is hit and it says creating object. That's the basics for the default constructor. You should also know that the user constructor will also be invoked. So let's make a version of that here so we can see it by doing a console right line. So we'll say public user and inside a right line, we'll just say user being created. We'll just make sure we specify user so we can see for sure that it's this constructor and not another one. Over in student, I'll do the same thing. We'll just say creating student. .NET run. So you can see it starts with the base class, the user constructor is invoked, then it goes to the derived class and the student constructor is invoked. So that's your introduction to default constructors. In the next video, we're gonna create a custom constructor. So that should be pretty fun. So check it out.